아, 페이커는 분명히 2014년에 실패를 했습니다. 팀이 월드에 나가지 못했고 상처를 한번 입었다고 할까요? 하지만 상처 입음을 통해서 더욱더 단단해진 페이커이기 때문에 아, 지금의 페이커는 2013년의 페이커보다 더 무섭습니다. 한번 내려왔다가 다시 이렇게 올라갔다는 것 자체가 거의 불가능에 가까운 일이라고 개인적으로 생각을 합니다. 노력, 그리고 결국 끊임없는 본인과의 싸움 아닐까요? 그냥 시즌3랑 지금이랑 비교하면 은 그냥 여러 방면에서 뭐든지 더 잘하는 것 같아요, 그냥. 쿠타이거스는 SK텔레콤과 정반대에 있는 팀이라고 할수 있죠. 왜냐하면 만든 지 1년도 되지 않았습니다. 그리고 페이커처럼 믿고 따를 수 있는 그런 리더가, 슈퍼스타가 있는 팀도 아니거든요. 엄청난 이변까지는 아닌 것 같아요. 전 개인적으로 쿠타이거즈가 SK텔레콤 T1의 전승 우승을 저지하는 팀이 될것 같고 저희는 이길 수 있다고 믿고 있고 그거대로 연습해서 이겨볼 생각입니다. 뭐 쿠가 분명히 대회 때 잘해서 나온 거겠지만 저희는 다른 팀과 다르게 쉽게 무너지진 않을 겁니다. 이지훈 선수랑 페이커 선수한테 둘다 저본 기억이 있어서 그 생각들이 많이 나는데 이번에는 네 달라야죠. Part of the mystery of Faker is that no one really knows why he continues to be as good as he was, how he can have such a deep champion pool. No one's been able to emulate it. 승리 그것만 바라는 것 같아요. 다른 것들은 어떻게 보면 다 부수적인 것들이겠죠. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2015 League of Legends World Championship Finals. Players and fans from around the world have come to Berlin's Mercedes-Benz Arena as just two teams remain at the final stop on the road to the Summoner's Cup. Now you're getting a look at some of the sights and sounds here in Germany where excitement is in the air. And of course, there are plenty of cosplayers in the crowd and even one brave fan is going to be posing with a giant poro now. Kids, don't try that at home for your own safety. All this anticipation is, of course, for the impending battle between the Ku Tigers, who you see heading in here into the venue earlier. They'll be going up against fellow LCK team SK Telecom, warming up in their locker room just a short time ago. Now, two strong teams, but only one will be crowned the champions. Hello, everyone. I'm James Dash Patterson here alongside Christopher Monte Cristo Michaels, Sam Kobe Hartman Kensler and Mitch Krepo Vorspuls to cover all of today's action between these two titans of a team. Hang on. And, and, yeah, and first things first, <laughs> we've got something we have to clarify here. Monty, what on earth are we wearing? Uh, this is a hanbok. It is traditional Korean clothing. I, you know, I was just so excited. It's such a great time for Korea right now. Uh, two teams in the final. It's the final we always deserved here at the World Championship. It's like we're watching so an LCK game, yeah. only with better casters. Uh, oh. Oh, 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 oh! Ladies and gentlemen, we're starting early. We're hey, starting early. You know, sometimes, Crepo, they have to give you the chance to actually cast the good teams. So well Welcome to the OGN Autumn Season Final. <laughs> That's going to be a good day, ladies and gentlemen. I, for one, am very excited for it. Let's start by pulling up the bracket and following these teams' journeys to today's finals over the last month. After emerging from the group stage as the number one seed from Group C, with a perfect 6-0 run, SK Telecom T1 has made an undefeated march through the bracket, taking down the LMS's AHQ Esports Club and Europe's Origin. Now, the team comes into today's final with the potential to not only make the first perfect Worlds run ever, but to become the first two-time champion in League of Legends history. And what an impressive fashion they've done it in. Getting all the way to the finals undefeated, as you said, they've. All of their games have been finished out so cleanly. Yeah, there's maybe one game where SKT just wasn't as convincing against Origin, really, in terms of goal. But even then, their numbers, and we'll get to that later, are just astounding. They 
they're well on, on track to become the world, most dominant world's performing team like in the history of League of Legends. Yeah, and even beyond the World Championship right now, they're on a 17-game winning streak dating all the way back to the regular season of Korea in the summer. All right, but we have to take a look at their opponents. The Koo Tigers climbed out of Group A as the second seed behind the LMS's Flash Wolves, but showed up big in the quarters and semis, taking out KT Rolls for 3-1 and sweeping hometown favorites Fnatic to make it here to Berlin. And the story for these guys making it all the way here, you know, after just forming the team is just, they're so easy to root for. Yeah, I mean, they're coming in as underdogs, but I didn't even think they'd be in the finals. I think they've really performed well, particularly Kuro has vastly exceeded my expectations coming into this tournament. Even Smeb, who was, did have a, a higher bar than Kuro, he's even overperformed that as well. And a lot of people coming into the series against KT were just rooting for KT to make it out, but Kuro com rather convincingly swept that series 3-1 to one and then made it you know, to the finals. Nobody really expected... Thank God China slumped a little bit, you know, made it a little easier for the Koo Tigers overall, but it's going to be, yeah. So I three think to, games. A, to a degree, too, after the bracket stages were drawn, a lot of people looked at Koo's side of the bracket, seeing Fnatic and KT, and saying, this is the tougher side of the bracket. So they've had a pretty, you know, sincere road to the finals. They have definitely been tested, and they've shown a lot of diversity in styles, in champions, in strategies that they've used. So that might actually hurt them here, because SKT have seen maybe a bit more. Now, of course, we won't be the only ones covering today's finals. You're going to get a look at our partners from China and Korea's OGN, who have made the trip to Berlin with all of the international teams to bring this event to fans and players in 20 languages around the world. So plenty of people out there enjoying the games. Now, of course, it's time, though, to head down to the stage and check in with someone who is no stranger to the League of Legends scene here in Berlin. Hello, Berlin! We get this deal! Supporter, and I'm very excited to be right here at center stage designed to give you the best view of the games today as our finalists fight for the Sumner's Cup. Now, whether you're with us here in person or tuning in from around the world, we've got you covered from every angle of the house. Now, with this setup and everyone here in attendance is also a real life part of the action. So, ladies and gentlemen, are you guys ready for the 2015 League of Legends World Championship? <laughs> You guys sound about ready, so now let's check in with the guys that will be casting the series today. Thank you very much, Shocks. Hello, Berlin. I am Rivington Bizzle III, and I am excited to bring you all of today's action with my partner in crime from North America, Joshua Jat Liesman, and the Danish Dynamo from the European LCS, Martin DeFiscio Lunga. Gentlemen, usually we come into a finals and you see who the best team in the world is going to be, but SKT approaches this finals already considered the best. Yeah, and the scary thing about it is how easy they have made it look on the road here, not dropping a single game. They haven't really shown a huge variety of strategies four rise games for Faker right. mm. and the fact that they're defending world champions. So yeah. they have kind of a chance to be the first real League of Legends dynasty if they can get the second win here, which would be amazing. And then they take on a team who, before this year even started, were a bunch of misfits. Nobody really wanted these players on their lineups. Right. We didn't expect a whole lot from Koo Tigers coming into the world championship. We said yeah. it was the weakest Korean team. KT would be above them. We were really wrong yeah. because <laughs> well, Koo Tigers showed up. That's the thing. Even during the World Championship, you weren't expecting it. They lost twice to the Flash Wolves in the group stage. Flash Wolves fell to Origin. Many people, pretty much everyone, was expecting mm -hmm. Fnatic to beat Koo in those semifinals, yep. but it was 3-0. They were even underdogs against KT in the quarterfinals, so every series they've gone to, they have looked to be the underdogs. Same story here, though. Well, they create the upset. There's no doubt this game would be monumental for Koo. By the numbers, SKT has this game at 10, 15, 20. We'll get into the stats as we go into the game, as we hopefully get five matches out of this one if SKT isn't bringing yeah. their A game. Have they even opened up Pandora's box yet? I want to see five games because we haven't had sure. the five-game season yet in the bracket stage, but I have a theory of every odd-numbered week brings excitement. First week, <laughs> and it was like six and three, then zero, 10 in week two. Two European teams made it to the semifinal in week three. Week four, they went 0 and six. This is the week for Kutakis to come back strong. This is the week for Smep to show that he's the best top laner in the world. He's gonna beat Mayan up there. In order for Kutakis to win this game, if he can do it, I think they can take it, but he really needs to play the best game of his life. I absolutely have to. Now, before we send it back to Dash and the gang for a look at today's matchup, SK Telecom T1 could be the first, first organization to take two world championships. So we take a, close, a closer look at the team then and now.
SK텔레콤 그렇게 대한민국의 최고의 팀이기 때문에 그 선수들도 본인 가슴에 있는 SK텔레콤이라고 하는 그 타이틀 나는 SK텔레콤 팀의 팀원이라고 하는 그 프라이드라는 것도 본인을 어떻게 더욱더 열심히 할수 있도록 만들어주는 그 힘이 됐다고 생각을 하고요. 시즌3에서의 SK텔레콤 같은 경우는 역시 최고의 팀이었는데요. 그때는 실패를 해본 적이 없고 물러서 본 적이 없고 좌절을 맛본 적이 없습니다. 항상 잘 됐죠. 꾸준히 이겨왔고. 2013 시즌의 SK텔레콤 T1은 다소 페이커 그리고 피글렛의 캐리력에 좀 기대는 부분이 있었어요. 그래서 임팩트, 뱅기 그리고 그때 당시 푸우 만든 팀을 서포팅해주는 그런 롤에 좀 치중된 They were very much a scrappy, pick-oriented team. They would play a lot of assassins, have these flashy individual plays, but they weren't necessarily the smartest team. They weren't the best strategic team. They just had a wide array of talent. Yeah, let's, everyone, we gotta introduce you guys to Faker if you haven't seen him already, because he might be just the best mid laner in the world. Uh, Faker는... 최고의 엘리트 코스를 밟아온 그런 선수죠. 2013년 기준으로 봐서. 어, 지금도 역시 최고의 선수긴 합니다만 어, 페이커는 분명히 2014년에 실패를 했습니다. 왜냐하면 페이커 자체로는 성공했을지 몰라도 팀이 월지에 나가지 못했고 결국 팀의 중심이었던 페이커는 실패한 시즌을 보냈습니다. 하지만 지금의 페이커는 본인이 항상 하드캐리 한다 그런 욕심도 버렸고 팀의 팀 플레이를 통해서 팀을 살리는 방법 팀을 살림으로써 본인이 슈퍼스타로서 다시 자리매김하는 방법 그 방법을 터득했죠 아 지금의 페이커는 2013년의 페이커보다 더 무섭습니다 음, 페이커 선수는 그, 그때는 뭐갓 데뷔했을 때고 경험도 별로 없었는데 물론 잘했지만 지금은 경험도 많아지고 경기 수도 훨씬 많다 보니까 훨씬 노련해지고 잘해진 것 같아요 저는 이번에 SKT가 우승을 하든 우승을 하지 못하든 그거는 크게 중요하지는 않다고 봅니다. 이미 페이커는 전 세계 유의무이한 존재고 다시는 등장하지 않을 그런 스타라고 생각해서 Fast forward to now, and it's less about those flashy plays and more about dominance on the map, dominance in the macro game. In season three, it was a lot about Piglet and Faker, whereas now it's much more about Marin and Faker, and Bang is more of a reserved role within the team than the AD carry used to be. They still have that same level of individual skill, but the strategy has gotten much, much better through experience with a lot of these players. 일단 시즌3랑 지금이랑 비교하면 은 그냥 간단하게 말해서 그때는 지금보다 못했던 게 많, 맞은 것 같아요. 한번 내려왔다가 다시 이렇게 올라갔다는 것 자체가 거의 불가능에 가까운 일이라고 개인적으로 생각을 합니다. 이게 가능했던 거는 아무래도 정답은 되게 단순한 것 같아요, 의외로. 노력, 그리고 결국 끊임없는 본인과의 싸움 아닐까요? 이게 되게 단순해 보이면서도 실제로 이걸 못하는 선수들이 훨씬 많습니다. 지금의 시즌5 SK텔레콤은 시즌3의 승리 이후에 큰 패배를 맛봤습니다. 시즌4에서는 특별히 우리가 기억나는 건한 적이 없고요. 시즌5 초반에도 역시 우리에게 실망을 남겨줬습니다. 그리고 기대를 했던 MSI에서 또큰 좌절을 맛봤죠. 실패를 맛보고 그 좌절을 딛고 일어나고 그 어려움을 해결을 하고 이 자리에 다시 우리에게 나타난 SK텔레콤이기 때문에 시즌3의 SK텔레콤과 시즌5 SK텔레콤은 더욱 더 강하고 더욱 더 확실한 승리를 만들어내는 것 같습니다. A brief history lesson for you there about SKT. I mean, the organization itself much bigger than that, and we'll get right down into that as we close into Game One. Let's look at how these teams have performed historically, starting with SKT. Yeah, let's definitely start with SKT because this is a team with such a storied history. of esports success. You know, it's not even just Korean 
uh, esports and not even League of Legends. Before League of Legends even existed, a, over a decade of StarCraft success with famous players such as Slayer's Boxer. And then when transitioning to League of Legends in season three, they were able to win the world championship within six months of forming the roster. Well, I mean, that's just how it has been with SK Telecom. They are the premier esports organization within Korea. They always have access to the, the top players. Everyone wants to play for this team. So it's, it's led to a, a long, long, many years of success and many years of dominance in many titles. Right, and then, of course, if we narrow the microscope to just this year yep. as a team, their record has been absolutely phenomenal spring through summer and only getting better, Monty, at the, as the year has gone on. As you mentioned, that 17-0 streak that they're currently on, on in terms of games. Yeah, Definitely I agree. I mean, the and the way with which they've done it too. Not only are they undefeated here at Worlds, but they've done it so quickly and so cleanly that they really haven't left much room for teams to try and develop the counter strategies. Yeah, and they've been building this up all year. If they look at spring, they went 29 and 11, summer 38 and 6. So over time, they're winning more, losing less. At Worlds, that trend only continues. Haven't dropped a single game. They maybe trailed behind in goal at 10 and 20 once this entire tournament. Nobody's even ready to challenge SKT. Yeah, it's not winning more or losing less. It's winning more or losing none now, which is a <laughs> great trend. So that's exactly where you want to be. There have really been only two kinds of teams here at Worlds, SKT and teams that lose to SKT. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe teams that haven't played them yet. Right. It's very go. easy categorization. Well, of course, then, too, we do have to look at the fact that they have only lost two series this entire year. The first one, EDG at the Midseason Invitational, and the second one, CJ Entis in the LCK Summer split so from a series standpoint when you ignore their you know minimal losses here and there only two series dropped in an entire year is a scary sight to be walking into when you're about to step on stage across from them in a five game series for the world championship i think such a huge part of that has been the development of marin and his growth on this team turning into such a good shot caller and such a prominent top laner when the meta shifts to top lane now, we've spoken about the fact that SKT has taken home the top prize in their first year as a team. Well, their opponents, the Koo Tigers, are looking to do exactly the same thing here today. And this is such a great story with the Koo Tigers. These were guys who, when the Korean scene consolidated from uh, two teams into one, there were a lot of players that were left over. And so Najin uh, lost four of their players. So we call them Smeb and the Najin, Smeb from Incredible <laughs> Miracle. But while we talk about SKT and how much infrastructure they have and how nice their practices facilities are with walls of trophies, when I first visited the Koo Tigers house, it's a new team. It's like six guys in a small apartment. It was just the players and Nofei, their coach, also former Najin player. So they started out without many of the luxuries or support that a lot of these top Korean teams have. And they have been so scrappy and stuck it out. And it, through really sheer force of will, they've made it to the world finals. Yeah, and talk about improvements in top yep. laners. I mean, you talked about where they got these players from. Smeb's reputation last year, very different from his <laughs> reputation yes. this year. Yeah, they even used him in highlights. you like, you died to Smeb, really? Yeah, that's, <laughs> like, that that's something that would destroy your confidence back yeah. then. Yeah, back then. But also, they're just so tenacious, the Koo Tigers. They don't really give up because they haven't had that really easy road like SKT have. They've had ups and downs. They've had tournaments where they came in like super hyped and suddenly, mm -hmm. you know, didn't all go all that great. And then now they're Wolves, like, Nobody expected him to be in the finals. People expect him to lose against KT. They just shrug it off. They even have the little, uh, let's make this place into a library trash talk going for them. So I just really enjoy watching them. Yeah, their comeback, you know, after the huge bump that was IEM, you know, and the ensuing weeks back in Korea after that, uh, it's been such a huge resurgence for this team to get back to this level. Yeah, I mean, IEM, for me, that's still the biggest upset in League of Legends history. The Koo Tigers losing that best of three to the 12th, the last place Chinese team WE was such a shocking turn of events. And, but they had the fortitude to bounce back, like you said, and now they're on the biggest stage. I think a large part of that, too, we've looked at their drafting phase, especially recently in the World Championship. We're coming out of the drafting phase saying, well, the team, the coaches have put together a phenomenal, you know, uh, toolbox that the players then get to put to use and, and style on other teams with. Yeah, absolutely. The diverse champion pools yep. come from almost every player, too. They just talk about tools, like each player is bringing so many to this. And it's real important at a tournament like this world, where there have been so many changes, the Koo Tigers have had a real advantage uh, pulling out a lot of these things that are strong in the patch, where other people have been taking a, long, a lot longer to actually pick those champions up. All right, well, when it comes down to it, Koo have everything to prove today going up against a team that has beaten them many times before. Now, before we look at the matchup specifically, let's hear from Smeb, who admits that he had some questionable games over this year's LCK season. 
제가 LCK에서 너무나 많은 경기에서 그런 약한 모습을 많이 보여줬어요. 그리고 저 자신도 그렇게 생각하고 있고 그래서 그런 평가에 대해서는 저는 당연하다고 생각해요. 그리고 그 평가들을 이번에 좀 엎을 수 있는 그런 기회라고 생각하고 저는 아린 선수가 지금 정말 새채 탑에 좀 근접해 있는 선수라고 생각하는데 결승전에서 그런 선수를 이긴다면 정말 더 기쁠 것 같아요. Notice how he snuck the word close in there. He's close <laughs> to the best top laner in the world because Smeb himself very He's well very might close. be. They're sitting right, <laughs> That's right. across they're, from each other. They're one game away, <laughs> or five games, or three, three wins away. Well, anyway, let's take a closer look at that matchup specifically, Smeb versus Marin. We've put so much focus on Smeb as a player for Kuba. Just on the flip side as well, we mentioned that Marin is a big part of their wins. I mean, both these guys are topping the rankings. So, like, if you look at both Marin and Smeb individually, it is impressive, but. What stands out even more is that Smeb gets less, but performs even better than Marin in this tournament. If you look at just damage done, he gets less gold overall from his team, but somehow deals more damage. And those two are by far the most, the, the best top laners in this tournament. I do really want to jump on these stats because people are going to wave, going to go waving these around, uh, and I don't think they're necessarily re signify which of these is a better uh, player in isolation, but more signify how these two teams have gotten to the finals. SKT, their entire team has gotten ahead in the lane phase, and then they transition into a mid game where they apply pressure at multiple points, and they finish it out very quickly. So Marin actually has also the highest CS per minute of any top laner. And the damage dealt to champion stat is actually a bit warped there for Smeb, because that's just damage dealt to champions. Marin is doing a lot sort of PVE work yep. for his team. And the way that Ku have gotten here is through winning team fights. And they've yep. needed Smeb not only to solo kill his opponent, but also come in and win them team fights. And in the five on five fights, whether it's one on one or five on five, he comes up with these clutch plays over and over. This is where I want to turn to Monty because I want to hit on Marin first in this matchup. You know, Kobe just mentioned how these stats to a degree might tell a lie in the way that they will match up 1v1, but more about how the teams play with those individuals. So Marin first on SKT. Well, yeah, Marin, like Kobe was saying, I absolutely agree. It's about being a split push threat. If we look at Marin, he's averaging something like plus 72 CS at the end of the game against his opponents. So he has been absolutely massive when it comes to split pushing, making sure that he's safe and constantly applying pressure across multiple lanes while also getting some impressive solo kills. Yeah, and that just allows SKT to play the game that they like pushing on all three lanes while he's drawing so much pressure. Either you deal with Marin or you lose your base. And when you're dealing with Marin, well, you're probably going to lose the Baron anyways. They're so good. Every time you should keep your eyes when they're when SKT is all, almost grouping, he peels off immediately to another lane, whether it's mid or top, keeps up the pressure. He doesn't wait for those waves to stack up and come in. Now, continuous pressure. He spends so much time on the enemy side of the map. And the fact that he can do that with while not getting caught very often, that is the most impressive part for me because yeah. they don't have that many wards placed out for him. It's purely game sense. I really want to hammer home this point on Marin just because a lot of viewers, everyone's so used to watching these games with both teams' vision yeah. revealed. So you don't get that same feeling a lot of the players when you're in these situations of the fog of war and what you have to work around. Marin is so good because he actually builds items to play this strategy as well. Early home guards for early experience advantage so he doesn't miss any waves. Also 100% uptime on his teleport. He saves it for uh, the objective plays. And he builds Tiamat almost every game so he instantly clears the wave, then retreats into fog of war, simultaneously denying information to the enemy team. And that's, it's just hard for people who haven't been in that situation to really understand the greatness that is Marin. Whereas Smeb, you're like, oh, he solo killed that guy. He's crushing the team fight. Yes, that's He's where I want to go next. I want to go to Smeb because that is exactly the point. So often when Ku was in maybe a losing situation in the game, all eyes went to Smeb and say, can he solo carry from the sideline? And yes. yes, absolutely. And he's going to have to do it again if they want to win games tonight. I think that we can all pretty much agree on that. And one thing that I think is very important is that Smeb has a larger champion pool than Marin does. He is also a Riven player while Marin is not. And if we notice that in the Fnatic series, Fnatic took great pains to draft around uh, Smeb's Riven. So I'm really curious what Coma has in store for us from SK Telecom. How are they going to play around this Riven tonight? And I think that they will have something prepared because, yes, oh, people are saying Marin's only played you know, a lot of Fiora and a lot of Renekton. That's, 
that's not a very deep champion pool, but they haven't been pressed, as we've been yes. talking about. And we know last time SKT played the Koo Tigers, uh, week nine, back in the regular season of the LCK, it was Marn who was counter-picking Smeb. They were prioritizing, the Koo Tigers were prioritizing Maokai, and Marn kept picking the Fizz this, over yeah. and over into it and punishing him. I gotta move us through the rest of the lanes. Moving over to the jungle. Why? I know, I know, there's gonna be so <laughs> much focus on this so top lane, and we will get to talk about it more, I promise, gentlemen. To the jungle, though, Bangi, Hojin. Interesting champion pool thing here because we saw Hojin come out with that Zac when we were questioning how teams were gonna react to Gragas being out of the tournament. Well, he pulls in the Zac. Bangi went for the Jarvan. Two very different junglers. Yeah. yeah. They, they obviously share Elise and Rexai here as jungle picks, but it goes multiple directions. And these champs are very likely to stay up. Nobody's going to ban Zac. Nobody's going to ban Jarvan or Evelyn. So we could see a repeat performance. I'm still not sold entirely on the Zac. I don't know how you feel about it, Money. <laughs> uh, I think it's great for team fighting, but it did show a lot of weakness in the early game because I think the Zac combined with Hojin's style of yeah. jungling leads to some problematic under farming. Hojin finds really creative ways to get behind an experience while still not... <laughs> oh! Yeah. Well, okay, yeah, so team team fighting, a very important thing for the Q Tigers. Moving to the mid lane, though, mm -hmm. I want to focus on Kuro because we have pointed him out as a possible weakling for the team, but really, he's been... A gold yeah, star. But he's been over... He's been overperforming this tournament. He's been performing very well. The, the only sad part, or the bummer for him, is the fact that he's going to have to go up against either Faker or Easy. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, coming into this, we can talk. Kuro has definitely surprised me. I did not expect him to reach this level of performance at the World Championship. He's been very reliable. He, he actually has more earned gold per minute than Faker does. Now, the problem with that, though, is that Faker does more damage than Kuro does with less gold. So the, we see that while Kuro is a great player and he's doing very well, he still has problems when it comes to reaching Faker's level of efficiency. Yeah, we looked at the stats there for damage dealt per gold earned. So if Faker earned less gold, dealt more damage. He's actually the second out of all players in this entire tournament in terms of damage efficiency, in terms of gold. The only player to top him uh, was, was NL. NL, NL with some massive yeah. AOE Jinx rockets, and that's cheating. So Faker, <laughs> even though people are saying he's dying a lot or he's not doing the most for his team, he's pulling so much aggro, earning less gold, and still topping those damage charts. And again, you have to be careful with uh, stats also like gold earned because sometimes it is a team deciding to yeah. give open lane farm to uh, one of the players. Sometimes there's gold sitting there on the ground, and the players just can't, can't pick <laughs> it up. They've got can't get the CS, but whereas, you know, players like Faker, players right. like Martin, you'll, Marin, you'll see them hit every single one, right. even when they're trying to clear Let's move them. on to the players that don't have to worry about picking up gold <laughs> off the ground, because it just falls into their pockets by virtue of being around. Hey man, that relic shield is really minutes. hard to <laughs> That's true. All right, I'll give that to you. You have about 45 seconds down the line to talk about these supports. What I love about SKT versus Ku in this matchup, just about wards, Briefly, Koo places a lot more wards than SKT, but SKT clears a lot more wards. So it's about vision versus vision denial, and it's going to be very interesting to see how they play with the vision on the map. Also, the uh, games have gone longer for the Koo Tigers, so they have been you know, spitting out those uh, sightstone wards and stuff like that. Gorilla, though, champion pool has been amazing. It allows him to do so much. All right, well, with those players and matchups in my life, I'm sorry. I wanted to, but he gave me the it's okay. All right, well, with those players and matchups in mind, we want to know what you think. So get on Twitter and tell us which player do you think will have the biggest impact in today's final and why. Remember to tweet your responses to at Esports and be sure to include the hashtag world so we can let you weigh in later today. I'm so happy that they changed top laner so people come like, hey, impact. Yeah, impact, 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 exactly. Yeah. No puns. All right, if you weren't able to join us here in Berlin for today's finals, you can Still catch all the behind the scenes action from the best seat in the house. Just follow LCS Esports on Snapchat and keep up with the day's festivities via our live story. If you are here in Berlin, though, be sure to share your world snaps and lend your perspective of the event. Now, of course, the time is almost upon us for these two teams to do battle for the Summoner's Cup and the title of world champion. So let's take a look around the venue where our finalists will hit the rift. And guys, I mean, this venue is absolutely insane. The setup for it, and there it's very loud. Coming to live events in giant stadiums like these, filled with esports fans, never gets old. This is absolutely my favorite part of the job. And yeah, we stood overlooking the venue earlier, just watching the crowd filter in, and then was talking to Colby. He's like, you know what? This job ain't it's so right. bad. <laughs> it ain't so bad. It's I, nine to five, but you know what? I, I, can, I can get used to this. I mean, I have to say that this being my first World Final, it's absolutely a special one. And as you mentioned, Kobe. 
uh, just the atmosphere of an eSport event you, only you makes it better. You literally feel the energy of all the fans because our station is shaking. <laughs> That's true. We are built into the stands. So as you guys make more noise, it becomes more perilous for us. semi-final stage. Get them! 
welcome the finalists for the 2015 League of Legends World Championship. Representing Korea and the LCK, Ku Tigers. Substitute Jungler, Wisdom.
support Wolf. Their substitute mid laner, Easy Moon. And their coach, Coma. That should be a kill, but the arrow comes in and they turn it around. Prey refuses to die. Run down, and Huni will not find anything. A quadra for Kuro. Then Hojin, he's gonna walk up away. And that's gonna be a kill. Hojin will pick it up. And Smeb will be smiling with that one. Ku will earn themselves a shot at the Summoner's Cup in Berlin against SK Telecom. Wow, Morin just eviscerates him, and SKT demolish H2K. Uber Bengi trying to get the work done. Amazing J walking around. First blood goes down for Bengi. Yeah, there's the room prison in there. All of the spells, all of the time. Faker, the 1v1 against Pawn. He puts the ulti in for the shield and flashes over the wall. Almost dies, and Easy Hoon gets it. It's very low red card thrown out, but Wolf comes in for a bit of bloodthirsty support kill stealing. Bang, bang. He wants to shoot them down. He's rocket jump forward. Bang's looking for the double. It's time for SKT to make it to the finals undefeated. It really is incredible to see each of those players as they walk on stage for the biggest series of their lives to really be owning the moment for themselves because you have to imagine that the pressure that they're feeling is immense. I mean, just walking over like a giant picture of yourself. Also, the only person <laughs> to ever walk or even roll over Faker will be Faker himself. <laughs> you know, uh, that, that took a lot of confidence to pull a roll like that live as well, and he stuck the landing. It's yeah. also the only barrel roll we'll be seeing tonight. <laughs> That's very true. Poor Gragas, rip Gragas. <laughs> well, as the teams take place on stage, let's focus in on today's best of five, where SK Telecom is favored to make a League of Legends history. Now, they're the only only world championship juggernaut to live up to expectations with a 100% win rate, the most dragons per game, the highest average gold lead at 10 and 20 minutes. I mean, what do you want? Dominance for every one dragon their opponents take, they take 4.25. For every one Baron, they get 14. Well, that's the thing. They're second place in Barons per game, but that's only because they finish games before ever having to take a second one. Yeah, and it's also, it's not how many Barons you take, it's what you do. They smash so many Nexuses while still having that Baron, but that's hard. They go from Baron to game over in like those three minutes very often in their games, and their Baron power plays, which just means how much gold you generate out of a Baron buff is just immensely high over this tournament, so they're just so efficient at closing out games. Yeah, really does look like Faker and Bangi are gonna make their way towards that repeat. Yeah, well there's, you know, for both of them, a lot of eyes on them about whether or not they can get that repeat, but specifically looking at Faker, I mean, this is a guy who hasn't necessarily been challenged yet. This tournament, Jat mentioned those four Rise games, we haven't seen much else. Is this the series where he's gonna be forced to step it up? Where is the LeBlanc? That's my question. <laughs> you know what my question is? Where's the Master Yi? Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. 
Uh, 14 champions that he played over the course of the summer season. He's had five here at Worlds, but they're, they haven't really been that surprising, and he's been mostly just dominating on Rise. He's the only Rise player in this tournament. He's also just a player that understands matchups well. He doesn't need to play them a whole lot to really understand the intricacies and the ways to outplay. Like, look at the Rise into DF matchup, the counter pick Olaf into the Aurelia, one of the picks that he actually debuted himself. So he knows all these matchups. And then at the other side, Kuro, who was kind of overperforming, I don't think we'll need to see Faker challenge. I think Faker on just cruise control can, can easily sweep through the series already. Yeah, I find it funny that that lower third we had earlier about Faker and uh, Kuro's shared champion pool, you know, the share of the Azir and the like, and then the two unique champions for Faker, Rise, which he's played four times, and the Olaf, which is just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> which he's got to kill within the first like three minutes of the game. Yeah. Well, well talking about that, Aurelia <laughs> in the mid lane, it, he debuted it against Kuro. That was a pick that he had waiting. So Kuro is no stranger to just Faker coming out with something very weird and having to deal with it on the fly. So maybe he'll have some answers this time around. We'll have to wait and see. Now, this does look like SKT's game to lose. So I want to flip over to Ku's side and look at the strengths, the ways in which they could win this matchup, starting with Gorilla. Yes, I definitely do want to look at the strengths of Ku because they deserve it. They have had such a crazy ride getting here. And I want to set up Crepo because they didn't get to talk about Gorilla before, our support main here. Uh, the tramp, the champion pool and the plays that Gorilla comes up with are just remarkable and they're so important to the team. Yeah, the thing is Gorilla, he, he has a very large champion pool and very often he's also playing different styles. He can play the peel support, he can play the engage support, he can play the roam support. So there's no reason to even doubt that that champion pool can go even deeper because if you understand all these different styles as a support and doesn't matter what champion you play because it's all about, you know, the mental ability to really understand where you have to be, what your role is, what your function is within a team fight. Do you have to peel? Do you have to set up and engage yourself? And he does it really well. So he had some fantastic performances at World so far. And he needs to really overperform if Ku want to have a shot to really, like, smash open. That's the only angle they can really take it. Well, I mean, we've seen how they prioritize that Tom Kench in the semifinal, and I think you just can't let him have that champion. He is the best Tom Kench player I have ever seen, and he's setting up a lot of these plays. What do Ku like to do? They like to just come into a lane with five people, smash down a turret, start a fight all as a, as a whole unit, and Tom Kench enables them to move behind people for ganks on the map in very interesting ways. Yeah, I really like Gorilla because, you know, he's definitely one of the superstars on this team as well. We talk a lot about the top lane, a lot about Smeb, but, but Gorilla being so good on Tom Kench and all the other supports gives Smeb more breathing room in champion select. We've seen them first pick and last pick save support for even a counter pick last. Yeah, well, you know, we talk a lot about uh, the two or the teams that have made it to the finals or made it as far as they have. They are the teams that were able to adapt to the meta and pick up these champions. You know, we'd expected Darius and, and GP and Fiora to be picked up. And then the Tom Kench came in and the teams that have succeeded, the teams that are still left standing are the ones that actually picked every single one of those champions up across the board. So you're saying the key to Worlds is unbench the Kench? <laughs> I, it might be. It's one of maybe four answers, right? Because Remember, we've got all the, we got all the power picks. Last year as well, uh, he was the one to really popularize Janna. Like, yep. Gorilla has been a very consistent player. Right, and then you also mentioned too the fact that we have talked about Smeb quite often. I'm Kinda gonna have to. have to point us back there. <laughs> we gotta talk about him one more time. I mean, this man has been a huge strength for them and someone that they have, have been able to rely on when they you know, come into those 10, 20 minute marks with gold deficits. Yeah, he's got the highest damage per minute of any top laner. He's 70, which is very significant above number two, who is Mar. And that is a large, large gap for the reasons we already talked about in terms of their liking for team fights. But this is the guy that has to perform right now. This is his day. If Ku Tigers are going to win this, it's probably going to be on the back of Smep. Yeah, as we were talking about, the reason, you know, he's got so much damage to champions is because they have to do that. They're behind in almost every single one of their games until they get to the team fights and they come and they wreck. But he's going up against an incredibly intelligent player that doesn't, that really knows the, all these matchups well, so he may be able to neutralize Smep. More importantly, so Smep's team fights comes a lot from patience. He doesn't go in immediately. He waits until all the cooldowns are gone. That's a, way, a couple of the, these team fights that he won really convincingly in the semis is where he waited for everyone to use their cooldown abilities, then move into the fight. I don't think SKT is necessarily going to make that mistake, let alone the, SKT's not even going to team fight them. They're just going to keep splitting up overall, so that's what's going to make it hard for Smep to really push his mark on this series for me. He either waits for them to be down, or he charges in with Fiora and reposts ultimates. 
Two times Skarner yep. ultimate, multiple Ash arrows. This guy's timing and the clutch plays are what really make him spectacular. Let's fire through a couple more things. The 80 carries, we haven't taken a look at them yet. This champion pool to me is the most interesting because they share so little. When you look at these two guys, only Kalista as a shared champion between these two players through this tournament. And I think the Mordekaiser may actually be a way for uh, Ku here to, to really change the picks and bans because SKT have really shown that they, they really don't like that champion. They ban a lot on blue side too. They have the most motor cars advanced in the tier tournament overall. So if Ku can put some pressure and, and suddenly say, well, there's an OP champion and Mordekaiser up here at the end of the pick and ban, maybe they can force something to, to break open there. But that is, that's a lot of ifs, and you won't probably not be able to do that against a coach with the experience uh, like Koma. Yeah, watching that champion pool develop, or at least the shared champion pool between the two of them in this series will be very interesting. Now, from a team-wide perspective, now, Ku has been playing from behind quite often. They have trailed in seven out of seven of their bracket stage games at 10 minutes, and five out of seven at 20 minutes. Ah, but they won but them you all. say that, but <laughs> they won every single game that they were behind at 20 minutes. This is the Ku magic. They are so good at playing from behind and making that work for them. Do I think it's the best way to play League of Legends? <laughs> Absolutely not. Am I still amazed every time Ku wins yes. in that fashion? Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't really want to be the comeback kings. To be the comeback kings, you have to be behind in the first place. But 5-0 and oh, when they're down at... Uh, at 20. 20 minutes is just ridiculous. Yeah, just being able to, to, to come back there. But the problem is, if you watch a lot of these games, there's very big mistakes from the other teams. Yes, Ku capitalized extremely well, but there was always a mistake. And now, instead of up going up against, like, KT in the quarterfinals, they go up against an S-tier right. KT here. <laughs> they have to rely and on them making mistakes. They, and SKT doesn't really make mistakes, because they keep snowballing, especially the 20 minutes. They're, they're like, an absurd amount of gold ahead on average. I think the final element, too, of their ability to make comebacks is the attitude with which these guys approach the game. We talk about what has enabled them to make this run to the finals, and it has to be their mentality, the way they're laughing in, at the end of every single game. These guys are, truly are a band of friends that have made it all the way to the finals. Uh, and that's that's been part of their entire history and their entire run is that how close all of these guys are, I think, really has helped them through having less infrastructure, uh, from having some of these disappointing defeats like in the spring finals or at IEM, and it, it allows them to keep powering through. All right, well, with game one just moments away, it's time to get down to it. Gentlemen, who is going to be walking away today as a world champion? Crepo, starting with you. Generally speaking, in these situations, I just go against the Koreans to piss off Monty. <laughs> but there's two Korean teams there, so I can't do that. So I'm just going to take the easy way out, say SKT 3-0. Where's your, where's your train zero. ticket from two years ago? You ripped right. it in half? I lost it. I lost it. It wasn't um, my wallet. You lost your train ticket? <laughs> I, had it, I actually had it ready for Worlds. Every time I open, it's like, yes, it's right here. <laughs> lost it. Yeah. Boot, boot him off the train, Monty. Boot him off the train. I mean, you say it's, so, it's the easy way out. I was actually kind of conflicted uh, about this matchup, just because I've grown to love this team over time, the, the Ku Tigers, all the players, they're, they're so, you know, they have, they're so charismatic. How can you not like this team? But I realized I was clouding my judgment. And so I went to ask the god of mid lane. I went to Faker. I said, Faker, who do I put my faith in now? Please give me a sign. And he did. SKT win. <laughs> I predict SKT to be the first time repeat champions. Nice guy Faker here. I mean, come on He now. makes it very clear. Yeah. He does. There's no <laughs> ambiguity. Would that you like one. to go now, Monty? Yep. Uh, <laughs> I will also be saying SK Telecom winning. I too love the Ku Tigers, but it's time for Faker to really cement his legacy as if it wasn't cemented enough already, and for him to be the first two time world champion. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Our analyst desk has spoken, but we're in for a series nonetheless. The stage is set, and as we send it to our casters to kick off the 2015 World Finals, we'll take a look at the Ku Tigers, a team that has defied expectations and are now within arm's reach of League's highest honor, the Summoner's Cup.